Everybody and welcome back to another episode of Andrew Rant's video series where I stand upon my metaphorical soapbox pedestal of the world and I pitch complain about things that annoy me, piss me off, and just plain drive me insane and Ah, oh, god damn it, I was right about Rick and Morty too, wasn't I? Oh Jesus. Alright, alright, let's get into this. I know. So last season on Rick and Morty, hell broke loose halfway through. When season four got split into two halves, the second half sucked. I mean, flat out just blew. And it, it, this thing blew chunks, okay? I don't mean that in a, oh, well, they tried, but it blew sort of way. I mean, no, it blew in a blue sort of way. So, of course, this was made all the more worse. <laughs> so that could be possible. <laughs> By season five. Now, season five, I honestly want to admit, with the amount of time that Royland had to work on, with the amount of effort that could be put into it, the fact that Adult Swim at this point should be chucking as much money as they can at this to make it as good as they can, since they decided to end the Venture Brothers, because God forbid a series that actually takes its time to make a proper series, to make it good, to make it enjoyable, to make it so that the fans love the lore. Oh, God, no, can't have that. But yet, here we are again. Season 5 of Rick and Morty. Now, to be fair, I thought Season 4 uh, really started to tank, like I said, in the second half. Especially that god-awful train episode. That was just six times of stupid. Rolled into one massive ball. And if you thought, I'm not even going to joke on this right now. If you thought the whole Summer and Beth shooting rainbows out of their vaginas because Morty has to come up with an impromptu story that's so stupid it doesn't make sense. If you thought that was horrible enough, Hold on to your seats, folks, because Season 5 just dials the fuck level right up to 11. Oh my god. So, th the first episode, <sighs> Morty finally has a chance to get with Jessica. He finally has, after five, after four fucking seasons, he finally has a chance to tap that ass. And yes, I know they're teenagers, but at this point, look... Morty's been through about as much shit as a 6,000-year-old man, so look, give the kid a break here, okay? I mean, hell, he is trying, he has been trying to get with Jessica for the longest time. I mean, trying his damnedest to get with her. He has done everything short of, you know, splitting the world in two. Wiping out all other people on the planet just to get with her. He wanted her to like him so much that during the flu season, which ended up fucking his own reality in his own dimension, oh, hey, here you go. We had to go and, uh, you know, screw that dimension over because, of course, Morty wanted her so badly that he created a, hey, you gotta, had Rick create him a, hey, you gotta love me potion. And, of course, oh, it's flu season. Oh, yeah, that's, uh... Yeah, that worked out well, didn't it? Yeah. Perfect. Great. So, that was fun. There was a season, uh, Edge, was it? Yeah, it was Edge of Tomorty. supposed to be Edge of Tomorrow, but it was Edge of Tomorty. <laughs> I get the reference. When Morty used the future crystal so that he could get to the future where Jessica's by his side as he's dying. Only to find out at the end of the episode that that's one of her dreams is to she wants to comfort dying patients in their last few hours who have nobody else to do it. And he hears this and he's like, son of a bitch. And then just like that, here's Rick. Hey, Morty, we gotta go to adventure. Yeah, fine, whatever, let's go. It's like, whoa, okay, didn't even have to ask. All right, let's go. It's like, I like the new Morty. 
It's like, yeah, you liked it in the morning because now this one's not taking any of your fucking shit anymore. He's pissed. He's like full on psycho. He's royally screwed. And that's the one where uh, you had what was it? Uh, actually, I think it was was that that was the season four episode too. I think uh, that was a better one. Yeah, but uh, yeah, that was yeah. That was, but anyway, um, what the hell was I saying? Oh yeah, that was the one where you had like all the wasp Hitlers and stuff like that. So you can already tell season four was starting to go downhill. But here's where season five just blows right past stupid and careens off the cliff towards dumbass. We have Rick's arch nemesis, ruler of the goddamn ocean, this discount Aquaman. And he's basically like making himself be an annoyance. It's like, you will bow before me. I am Nimoid or Nimrod or whatever that fuck his name was. And it's like, yeah, Rick doesn't take you seriously. And after watching the episode, I'm like, I don't even take you seriously. What the hell is your power again? You control the ocean? So does Aquaman. And Aquaman sucks just as bad as you. Only in this case, Aquaman has better staying power than you. And this all happened because Morty touched the ocean. Really? Morty touched... It's a crash landing. I'm sorry I missed the land and we could have just imploded on impact. Wow, I got your ass out of the freaking problem, and we survived. Are we on the ocean? Yeah, oh, shit, 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 no. Yeah, no. There's, there's Rick Starts Nemesis. So now, the B plot of this, which is how Jessica got sucked into this and managed to get screwed over anyway, was that Rick had this little portal where time accelerates faster on the inside than the outside. It's like a difference inside. I, I don't remember the exact term for it, nor do I give a shit! Because that's lazy time travel writing. But basically, you open up the portal, whatever you put in there, you close it, come back out to this portal, then you go back in, it's rapidly aged. So, of course, well, the wine's now perfectly aged and he's stuck in there. So, he goes in, has Morty go in to get it, and this guy slides, oh, I'm gonna help you quick take it back. Bad idea. And Morty's like, yeah, thanks. Takes the guy back through, and he goes back in. It's like, oh my god, why is everything so old? Why is my wife dead? What about my kid? Oh yeah, your kid's now pissed off because you disappeared for years on end and never came back. And then this created a massive hatred towards Morty and drove these people to want to create a castle just to kill him upon sight. Oh yeah, that worked out real well. Because then all of a sudden Morty comes in, is like, you know what, enough with this bullshit. Grabs like most of Rick's weapons, goes in there, goes full Terminator on their ass. Just wipes the fucking floor with these assholes. Ends up grabbing another thing on the wine, leaving because Jessica wants the wine. She wants to get drunk and Morty's like, hey, whatever's going to help me out here, I'm going to go for it. She's actually over here. We're having a date. I'm happy. And then she gets taken hostage. She gets suspended in time and becomes a time god. And now that she's a time god, now she doesn't care about Morty. It's like, you're a time god. You have all the time in the world. Spend a little bit of it with a little hopeless bastard. Look, the guy, look, Morty has gotten screwed over in this series more times than I care to count anymore. There was an entire episode. What was it, the Vat of Acid episode, I think? I'm almost thinking it was the Vat of Acid episode, but don't quote me on that. Where, and by the way, that was a stupid one too. Where Morty is given a redo button by Rick. It seemed like a remote control. That'll be important for a moment. And he ends up meeting a girl. And they hit it off. And they have this long romance. They get to know each other. They go on a, you know, they go on a trip. Their plane ends up going down over the Arctic. They're stranded. They're thought to be dead. And Morty decides he's going to go back. Because the remote control's there. If he gets it, he can reverse this. She'll be safe. He'll forget her. But she'll be safe. They'll be alive. And that's what his plan is. Only they manage to get rescued. They come home. Everything's happy. Morty's happy. And then just like that, Jerry. God damn it, Jerry. Picks up the un picks up the button and pushes it and everything goes back to normal. Because 
Morty got screwed. And once again, in Season 5, he's getting screwed again. And that was just the first episode. The, the second episode didn't even help matters. Oh my god, the second episode had to do with duplicates. Oh, there's duplicates. I have duplicates all over the planet. It was basically, which Rick's the real Rick? Oh, I give the fuck up anymore. There's puppets. Oh yeah, we're too cute to kill. You lose track of what the hell's reality and what isn't reality. I get it. That's your whole joke, right? I don't care. It's still stupid. It's still idiotic. And I still don't like it. But then... Oh, God, does it get worse. Episode 3, Planetina. Planetina. Okay, so we got the Captain Planet Wannabe. And by the way, I miss the fact... I, I love the fact... Sorry, I shouldn't say I miss the fact. I love the fact that Mati, that Mati's character wasn't even uh, premised in this. Oh, you have uh, Earth, Fire, Wind, and Water. But God forbid you have the heart. That works. I never got the part of heart. What the fuck was Mati's power again? Heart. What the hell does that do? What the, You tell me what that does. Because I'm thinking it does jack diddly shit. And that's what it does. A jack a diddly shit. But it gets so much worse. If you think that that was bad. I mean, in all honesty, that was a really good Morty episode because he actually had a relationship with an all-powerful deity, Planet Tina, and the Tina Tears, which, that was a stupid name for them, summon her, and boom, her and Morty are making out, oh my god, we gotta stop this, so they start chastising Morty about it, and it's like, he's thinking to himself, you know what, I'm just gonna free her, the hell with you assholes, he frees her, and she goes complete psycho! I mean, he finally sees her for what he is. She is a psycho! You so much as drop one fucking crumb on the goddamn ground. She is on your ass! Yep, nope, we're good. We're good. We are good here. So he breaks up with her in the end. And oh, is it heartbreaking. But that heartbreaking, really feel-good episode... It's completely ruined by episode four with the space jizz. Oh, Jesus, here we go. Look, this is where I think you can quintessentially say Rick and Morty is limping to the barn. I didn't even watch season five's episode, or season, sorry, season five, episode five yet, and I don't really want to, mostly for the fact that this feels like it's going to be a Jerry-heavy episode. And after Wooden Jerry screwed over everybody and got his just desserts, yeah, I like that post credit scene. You fucked everybody over. You judas all their asses for a bottle, for a can of varnish. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you judas all their asses for a can of varnish. You asshole. Yeah, he got what was coming to him. That was perfect. Just going down the river, beavers tear him apart. Yeah, you got screwed. You got screwed. <laughs> Honestly, I'm not going to lie. That's my favorite post credit scene so far. But of course, I got to yank this bandage off. So season five, episode four. Morty decides to volunteer at the horse hospital his mom works at after seeing the sample collector. Oh, sure, let's just have, let's just put two and two together here, folks, shall we? Well, Morty's gonna hump the machine and make an entire barrel of his spunk. Which Rick takes thinking that it's horse jizz and wants to do some weird-ass experiment with it in order to create something to take out the chuds. Which was a villain series we never even fucking heard of until this episode, the Chuds. Because apparently Rick decided, oh, he knocked up the uh, princess of the Chuds. Which, it's Rick, that's, uh, that's Rick. I'm not gonna lie about that. But this leads to massive alien sperm. Which they're then dubbing space sperm. Okay, cool. This episode is... Is so painful on an amalgam of levels. From the fact that you have, I don't even. Want, I, 
I'm sorry, I, I really don't want to remember it, but I'm doing it for you. You have sexism. You have uh, sexist innuendos. You have sexual innuendos. You have penis jokes out the ass. Not to mention all of this culminating into the one thing that I swear to God has been in every Rick and Morty fan fiction for the last three seasons. Now, for those of you that don't know about how Rick and Morty's gone so far, Morty and Summer are brother and sister. No shit. Only this Morty isn't that Summer's Morty. This Morty's a different reality Morty. So, what does all this mean? Well, technically speaking, this Morty could do Summer. If you really want to stretch that definition. But of course, all of this pales into comparison to the big, huge enchilada. So, Summer comes up with an idea, but is ignored because, of course, she's female. Which is the one point in this episode that was pissing me off more than you could imagine. Oh, I'm sorry, she can't have a good idea just because she doesn't have an XY chromosome. It's because she doesn't have a Y chromosome. She has two X chromosomes. She can't have a good idea. She decides, she gives the idea of, hey, sperm are attracted to eggs. Let's just get an egg, make it huge, put it in a giant area, and all the sperm will come to it. Still thinking that it's space jizz. If we'd be going off with the original idea and the original premise, it would be horse jizz. So... They decide to go with this after the male scientist goes, Hey, it literally repeats Summer's idea. Meanwhile, Rick and Morty have now discovered that it's Morty's jizz. Well, of course, Morty already knew, but Rick didn't know, but now knows. <laughs> yeah, he's not too happy. And of course, the jizz has become sentient. Now, he now Morty manages to save one that's called he calls Sticky. And he managed to save Sticky because Sticky's tail was stuck under a rock and Morty picked it up and showed, I'm not that bad, it's okay. And Sticky became his friend. Oh, I am really not comfortable with this. But sure, why not? What the hell? Let's just dive into it. You have multiple cliches, multiple stupid scenarios, all of this leading up to all the sperm leave the Grand Canyon. Because they were all in the Grand Canyon for some reason. You put two and two together, I'm not going to do that for you. And they all leave the canyon and go to Vegas. Again, you put two and two together, I'm not doing that for you. Where Summer's massive egg that she donated is literally blown up to huge proportions and is awaiting their arrival. So, the government in this episode is fine, perfectly fine, with... Oh yeah, we're going to quote the devil. We're going to allow space jizz to fertilize a human egg. If it be what Rick originally thought it would be, they'd be making a giant chud. In this case, after they are celebrating their stupidity, it's like, Oh yeah, we got this, man! We got this! Yeah! Oh yeah, we're gonna spank this down! We got this! We got this! Oh yeah! Now, all of a sudden, they find out that it's Morty's. Oh, God, no! Yep, the minute they find, the minute they find out it's Morty's spunk. The very minute they find out. All of a sudden, it's like, it's Morty's, you idiots. Oh, my God. Now, all of a sudden, it's like, no. No, we're going to create a giant incest baby. Now you have a problem with this plan. If our hands were perfectly fine, this, now you have a problem with this. So now they're basically doing this massive, okay, we're just going to shoot all of them. We're just going to stop them from getting anywhere near the egg. Of course, Sperm Queen, ironic by the way, decides to... I'm gonna impregnate the egg. I'm gonna be. You know, I'm gonna do what my programming wants me to do. Only for Sticky to stop her, and Sticky goes in for the win. 
Of course, they launch the egg into space, and in a post credit scene, we see the massive incest baby. An apparent rumor, because I don't know if it's confirmed or not, a leak for episode 7. Like, episode, it's either going to be 6 or I think it's episode 7. God hoping it's not episode 6. Apparently, the giant incest baby's back, and there's going to be some anime uh, things in this. And the rumor had it that the giant incest baby was going to be called Naruto. And when I heard that, I practically dropped to my knees. I'm like, you have got to be kidding me. There is no way, no way, no beeping way in hell that this would be allowed. None. You cannot tell me this would be okay. There is no possible way this would be okay. How in the hell was this okay? Who in the writer's room looked at this and said, Hey, you know what we gotta do? Incest baby? Incest baby. We gotta do incest baby. Why do we gotta do incest baby? We're just gonna do incest baby. Oh, okay, we're doing incest baby, I, I, I guess. Why? Damned if we know, but we're doing it. So, of course, now you get incest baby. So now there's a giant Morty and Summer baby floating around space. I mean, we had the giant hobo Santa in that Christmas episode when uh, Jerry's mom was getting it on with uh, some other guy. And his dad decided, oh, I'm going to watch him in the closet. Or sometimes in a chair. Often dressed as Superman. It's like... What?! Look, I'm just going to say it. From a show that had such really good premise at the start, this was Doctor Who meets South Park, for God's sake. And I'm talking old school South Park here. Not the new school shit. I'm talking old school South Park. Okay? I mean, we're talking old school South Park. This was Doctor Who meets Old School South Park. It has quickly devolved into shithole hell. How in the name of God you would let this happen? I cannot even begin, begin to imagine the extra levels of bullshit that went through your goddamn heads to make this happen. Well, we're going to do this and this this week and this and this this week. And oh, by the way, kids, if you're out there, turn off the TV. This is not for you. Yeah, no shit. But, I mean, this was Doctor Who meets Old School South Park, and it was really good. And, okay, if they wanted to end it, Season 3, that would have been the perfect place to end it. You basically reset everything back to normal. It's the status quo, and we can go on thinking the rest of our lives that, okay, so Rick and Morty just continued having adventures. Just quantum leap its ass, okay? No. No, we're going to basically 100% screw this thing right to the wall with the whole... Well, we're happy that it's this, but we're not happy that it's this. So you decide to screw over everyone. Well, thanks a lot for that. Now I feel horrible inside. And not in a good way. I feel dirty. I feel used. I feel cheap. I feel like somebody screwed me to a wall and said, take it, baby. This season of Rick and Morty, honestly, in my honest opinion, is the worst by a long margin. A huge margin. And if you think for a moment, and I mean one even second glance at this, that I'm, you know, going to say this is a good season... You are full of shit. This season sucks. I said this was... I was hoping this wasn't going to happen, but here it is. The season five of Rick and Morty, and it's in the toilet. Look, I, I have no respect anymore for the creators of this. Adult Swim just basically is putting this out there because they canceled the Venture Brothers, so they got nothing else to fall back on. You want stoner programming? You want programming that people are going to watch when they're baked? 
Here you go. It's Rick and Morty. Because nobody with a brain cell is watching this. Adult Swim, home of the stoner programming. Hey, guess what? That's exactly what's happening now. I'm sorry, does that offend you? Well, we're Adult Swim, we don't care. But let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. Are you happy with the way Rick and Morty's gone so far this season? I mean, we're five episodes in. I only talked about four of them because I didn't watch the fifth one, and I'm not going to. I am out as far as Rick and Morty's concerned. You lost me as a viewer, okay? You lost me big time. But let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. And until next time, I'm Andrew Rhodes, and this has been Andrew Rants.